Welcome back trainers. So in this video, we're going to be taking a little bit more in-depth look at the shadow Pokemon just so you can see and understand how much better they're going to be performing with this buff. And then towards the end, we're going to be taking a look at some random Go Battle League Master League battles and then eventually Con Keldor to see how it does perform. And it was magnificent. So Poke Battler has put together a kind of graph to indicate and show how well these can perform here you'll be able to go to their site and take a look at this shortly i do believe it'll be up i got this one from their twitter here link in the description to that as well so taking a look at top counters going up against thunderous what do we have rampart is at number one spot maintaining that and then number two we have tyranitar with smackdown and stone edge now this is going to be the shadow version and i want you to take a look at the Shadow Tyranitar, and then the regular Tyranitar in that number 7 spot. So for the Shadow, it's only going to take 19. And then if we go to the regular Tyranitar, it is also going to take 19. And the Shadow is going to be performing a lot better, taking it out faster, as well as the Shadow Weavile, folks. This is big news. So if you're one of the people who did max out a Snorlax, a Dragonite, a Tyranitar, or even a Shiny Weavile, before all this... You know, that kind of sucks that you did invest all that Stardust and now they're cheaper, but at the same time, well, you're going to be able to benefit now. Taking a look at a list Ryan Swag did put together, I will leave a link to his Twitter in the description. So taking a look at the Dragons, we have Shadow Salamence in that number one spot with Draco Meteor, then Shadow Dragonite, then Kiram Black, which is going to be outperformed by the Shadow Pokemon, Rayquaza in that number four spot, and then Salamence with Outrage Community Day. Now we previously went over, you should possibly... TM away frustration and prepare these Pokemon for a later time for the Community Day moves. Previously, they were not able to learn that. There has been no confirmation that they can learn Community Day moves, so just keep that in mind, but you never know. Moving into the darks, we have Shadow Weavile, Shadow Houndoom, Shadow Tyranitar. Amazing. Then Rocks, Rampart is just staying in number one. Shadow Tyranitar with Smackdown. For the Ice Types, we have Shadow Weavile taking that number one spot. So yet again, another fantastic Shadow Pokemon for you to have. For the Ghost, we have Shadow Bayonet. There's a little caution on that. It's going to be extremely squishy, so don't go and invest in it quite yet. Yes, the DPS is great, but it's not going to be able to last that long. For Fire, we have Shadow Moltres, Shadow Entei, Reshiram, Germanitan, and then Shadow Magmortar. For Electrics, we have Shadow Electivire, Raikou, Magnezone, and then Zapdos. For Grass, we have Shadow Victory Bell, Shadow Shiftry, Regular Roserade, and then Shadow Venusaur with Solar Beam. For the Steel types, we have regular Metagross, Community Day, Shadow Metagross with Meteor Mash, and then Shadow Caesar. For the Bug types, we have Shadow Pinsir, Shadow Scizor, and Shadow Scyther. Looking good. This is insane, guys. For the Water, we have Kingler still staying at that number one spot. Then Shadow Gyarados. And then at the very bottom, we have Shadow Swampert with Surf. Now, obviously, everything that can receive a Community Day and be Shadow eventually will be absolutely fantastic. And then we have... Uh, Psychic Mewtwo with Psy Strike staying in that number one spot. Shadow Metagross and then Shadow Glade and then as well as Shadow Gardevoir for those Psychics. For Fairy, we have Shadow Gardevoir, which I called that one. I knew it was going to be good. That one's going to be fantastic. For the ground types, there is going to be no shadows. And then for Poison, we have Shadow Victory Bell, Shadow Vileplume, and that's going to be about it. For the normals, we have Shadow Porygon. And that's about it, Porygon 2 as well. So there you have the list so far, and we'll get more into these details as more information does come out uh, regarding the Shadow Pokemon, and maybe we'll even possibly get a debuff on this massive attack buff. So if you did not see my last video or haven't caught wind of this yet, you will be able to get Thunderous from the Go Battle League. It's not gonna be guaranteed every single time, and you can get this both from premium and from the free uh, versions when you do go into there. Uh, so for the free one, it's going to be your fourth win. And for the premium, it's going to be your second win. Just wanted to make mention of that because it's a big deal. If you do decide to stay in your house nowadays uh, with the concerning issues going on. So taking a look at some random battles. Now, I'll be putting on the side here from Poke Battler how well the Conclador will perform. But it's going to be a minute before we take a look at those battles. And I just wanted to cover something before we go forward here. And that is the fact that I like to test out random stuff i know a lot of you understand this already and this is why my score is so bad uh, because it fluctuates i can get really high up there if i continue to use the meta solid teams as you as we've seen before uh, but then i get a little frisky and a little bored with that and i just want to use random stuff like a rk9 that's obviously not going to be a good pick but i just wanted to see how well it would perform and just test it out for you know the heck of it uh, yes, Togekiss is good. Yes, Swampert is good, but paired all three together, 
probably not the best to go into Master League with all of these legendaries roaming around with those top metas. So just thought I'd give you guys a mention, thought I'd throw in some of these battles here because I usually put up the the teams that I've composed that are going to be able to pull wins pretty good. Uh, as far as this team, not so much, just testing it out and I just thought I'd let you see exactly what's going on here. It didn't perform horrible. As you can see, the Swamper did pull off that win there, uh, but at the end of the day, just throwing re weird stuff like an RK9 isn't going to help you, but I just wanted to see how well it would perform there. Uh, so if you want to pick Machamp over Kong Kildor, what are the differences? Well, uh, Machamp's going to be able to spam its cross chop a little bit faster than Kong Kildor's dynamic punch, but Kong Kildor is going to have higher attack, therefore doing more damage with its counter, especially with those Melmetals and those Snorlax as well as Dialgas roaming around, you're going to be able to do quite a bit of damage as you're going to be able to see here shortly. So uh, yeah, I, I just I just wanted to test it out. Just have a little fun with it, like I previously just stated here. I haven't used Machamp whatsoever in the Master League, and this was the first time of me using the Kong Keldor. And you're going to see just the raw battles. I'm not going to show you just the wins or the best matches or anything. I'm going to show you from beginning to end when I started using it until the very last end. I was surprised. It was amazing. I already knew it could perform well. It was just about getting those key matchups, the lead, and making sure I switched properly, as well as the team composition. Uh, so taking a look at this silly battle here. I mean, it's, it was an obvious loss. I wasn't going into this thinking I'm going to win with an RK9 on my team, but it was definitely not ruled out and I was still able to hold my own to some degree. <laughs> some of you are probably laughing like, sure. Uh, but anyways, I do believe we have the Kong Kildor on our team now. Now this is in the beta version. And what I mean by that is I'm still testing it out to see how well it is going to perform. So we do have a Togekiss, Snorlax, and then a Kong Keldor in the end. And my Kong Keldor does have a secondary move. And this is going to be very expensive. And that is another problem. Yes, you can trade it for the candy cost to completely diminish when you do evolve it into its final stage. Uh, but the thing is, Machamp, we've had them all lying around. And you probably already have one maxed out with the secondary move. So they that may be a better option for you to use instead of investing in a Kong Keldor. But on the plus side, Kong Keldor is also going to be alongside one of the best fighting types Lucario, if not better in some situations because of the TDO that it does have, enabling it to survive longer in that fight. So bringing out Kong Keldor, let's go up against Melmetal. So we have nothing to worry about when it comes to Rock Side. We're resisting that. Superpower did a good amount of damage, as you can see here. We did retreat with some energy on it. And we're going to be going into our Togekiss in response to that Kyogre there. Able to take it down. Let's see what they bring in next. It's going to be that Melmetal, of course. And I was happy that they got off a charge move quick and then farmed me down a little bit more. They have no more shields. Our Kong Keldor is going to go ahead and faint this down with the counters. We're going to hold our energy and use our shield here. And what do they have in the back? That's going to be a Snorlax, and that's absolutely fantastic. We have enough energy to get off two dynamic punches, I do believe. There's one, and then there is two. So we're able to take our very first win using Kong Keldor. Now, also keep in mind, my rank is so low that it is... I think matching me up with rank nines because of the performance of using all these wacky teams. Um, or it could just be the simple matchups that I just have with people in my area. So we have a mirror match here uh, with Tokiasis. I do decide to hold the energy on mine and retreat into the Snorlax in which we're going to be switching up the team. I'm going to be putting Melmetal on there. Uh, Togekiss will remain on the team and then obviously Conkeldor uh, will continue on as the showcase. Uh, so Snorlax, superpower. Eh, you know, that's good. I do decide to shield this up because I want to burn a shield on him. And I know this is going to put pressure to do so. And he does use a shield, so that's good. And he has to worry about me getting off another superpower. So he's have, he has to use the energy at this point. That's great. The defense is lowered quite a bit on the Melmetal. So we're going to go in here with Kong Keldor and just farm it down. They do bring in Dialga. Now, this isn't great. And we're not looking too good because we're having to switch here because, you know, fighting not very effective against that massively beastly thing. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and go Ancient Power. They're bringing in their Togekiss. And at this point, it's it's a game over. I'm going for the lower energy cost because we'll still be able to faint it down. Uh, but going up against a legendary ghost type with a fighter is, is not happening. Um, if it was low enough and I got Stone Edge off, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's see here. I think they let this through. 
Do they have any more shields? No, no more shields. Okay, so, I mean, it does a decent amount of damage. And I'm almost, almost to another Stone Edge, too. So, I mean, not a hard loss. And it's still pretty good for the first trial battles. Now, this... This is ridiculous. I just wanted to see what would happen. Conkeldor, a Gardevoir, and a Togekiss. After this battle, I'm going to be putting the Melmetal in, and we're going to get serious here. Uh, but you're, <laughs> this one's funny. So we have a great lead. I was like, fantastic. They're staying. I was like, okay. We definitely can't switch because we have two Charm users in the back. And like I said, just having fun with it. Obviously, putting two charm users is not going to be the best idea. So we get that threat out of there. Now we're going to switch immediately because, well, we're just going to use the Gardevoir as kind of like a, a bait to bring in something else. And they bring in that Snorlax, which is great. Uh, we're not able to get off a single charge move, even if, even if we're able to get off a Shadow Ball. Uh, yeah, it's not very effective against the Snorlax. So we're going in with the Conkeldor. This is great. They do have two shields, though, so... Not the best situation. They will be shielding that one up. And we're able to almost faint it down. Unfortunately, we're not able to, though. Going back in with Togekiss, I do decide to let this one go through. I think they hit me with another one, and I decide to shield this up because I want to keep the Togekiss a little bit healthy. Seeing that it is my last Pokemon, and they're going to be on their last one as well. That's going to be Kyogre. We're between a rock and a ocean. All right? A very hard place, okay? So... What's going to happen here is I'm praying for the boost. If I don't get this, I can't win. Uh, so we get the boost, folks. We get the boost, but they're able to get off their charge move. Am I going to be able to survive this? Barely. And I take the win with two fairies and a Conkildor. Let's go. Now we're going to get serious. As you've seen, uh, this is for reals. Let's go. So starting off with Conkildor, we have an absolutely horrible lead. Uh, so we're going to be switching into our own Togekiss here. And hopefully bringing out some sort of steel type so we can just respond with our uh, Conkeldor after the Togekiss does faint out. And going to be going for that Ancient Power, of course. And i uh, been excited for this one here. Really been waiting to use this. And this morning I was just like, you know what? I don't care if I win or lose. Let's just go and test out our canine. Let's test out Conkeldor. Not a horrible decision on that one, though, as you'll be able to see. So just as planned here, we're able to bring in our Conkeldor and we're not shielding this up and we're going to be able to faint it down and have a ton of energy. Uh, so when they do bring their Togekiss back in, we can go for Stone Edge. So that's a good coverage move here. Uh, doing a lot of damage. And they let it go through and it almost one shots it. They faint us down, which is perfectly fine. We have a Melmetal here and we still have two shields. So I do decide to go for the shield here, thinking it might be a flamethrower. It was an ancient power, but better safe than sorry. And we do have a Dialga in the back. Now at this point, what I have to do is try to get that shield out of here. We do not want to lower our attack yet because then we're going to be left quite vulnerable, uh, seeing that it is our last Pokemon and we only have one shield left. So let's see if they give up the shield here. We got up two rock slides and they are still not giving it up. We're going for another one here. Now they're in the danger zone. If they don't shield this up and I sneak into their superpower, they're over. So they decide to go for that shield. We have a shield left because we did let that iron head go through. So we played this out perfectly and we're able to get to that superpower and take the win in which Conkeldor played its position quite well. Uh, moving into the next battle here. Uh, same lineup. Conkeldor is going to be in the lead. I might have switched the lead towards the end. So we have a great matchup against the Dialga. They're switching into Giratina, uh, and we're going to be bringing in our Togekiss, of course. Usually people like to go for a Shadow Ball right off the bat, and I don't switch immediately, not super fast, because I want to make sure that my switch is going to be correct, because I don't want to you know, switch into something horrible here. Uh, so we are going to let this go through. And great, we have enough energy for a charge move. We're going to go for Flamethrower in case they bring in Dialga, but they bring in Melmetal. Uh, but they do shield that up, so good call for them. And obviously, we know what we're going to be bringing in here. They're pretty much stuck because they have a Pokemon weak to fighting in the back, and then this one is well weak to fighting. So we're looking great with the Conkeldor. We're not going to shield this up. They beat us with a Rock Slide, and we uh, called that correctly. We're just going to go ahead and go Dynamic Punch. Didn't even hit an excellent there. In comes the Dialga, and we're looking great, folks. The Conkeldor can go down. It did its job, and we have a Melmetal in the back, which counters Dialga pretty well. We're not even going to shield this up, I don't think. They have no more shields. We're just going to go for a superpower and take the win yet again. Looking good. Feeling good. Let's keep it going here. All right, moving on to the next battle. Um, 
yeah, Melmetal, you know, it's just one of those amazing Pokemon that you just can't go wrong with. Uh, so we have a Garchomp lead. Uh, very interesting. I wasn't 100% sure how this was going to work. I didn't know if he was going to bait me with a Sand Tomb, but he goes for an Outrage. Ouch. He does decide to use a Shield here, and at this point, I probably should have switched. Uh, he makes a very nice switch there, taking my Conkeldor out without me enabling to use my energy. I'm going to be going in here with Melmetal. A good counter against the Togekiss, as we all know. I would just have to look out for that Flamethrower. We are within death range. I might survive with a sliver of health, but I don't want to risk it. And I gain a little bit more energy, and I don't even hit any of these because that's going to simply faint it out anyways. And they bring in a Garchomp, bringing it back into the battle. I know it has energy, so we're going to go Superpower and make the switch immediately into our Togekiss and then they're bringing in their Melmetal and it's not all lost yet but it's not looking good for me. Uh, Togekiss up against Melmetal he's gonna be able to farm me down here and have energy for, for when I bring in my own again and they let that one go through which is great. This is great now I can just simply hit it with a rock slide and uh, not lower my defense and having to go for that superpower. Let's see if they decide to shield this one up here. They let it go through. We have the Garchomp in the back. Can we pull this win, folks? So I do decide to shield this up. They're going for Sand Tomb. They had another one. I knew they had a bunch of energy, so they're lowering our defense two times at this point. Mud Shots are tearing into us. They have no more shields, though. We're going to be going for that superpower, and we're able to take the win. Yes, let's go. On to the next battle here. Starting it off with Conk yet again, and a horrible lead. Also, once again... So we're switching into our Togekiss to bring it in their Metagross, and yeah, this is this is horrible because the Metagross is just doing massive damage with Bullet Punch, and uh, yeah, not looking great. And it also has possibly Earthquake, which is going to be a threat to my Melmetal. So we bring in our Conkeldor. Uh, it is going to be part Psychic, the Metagross, as well as Steel, so uh, the fighting moves are going to be neutralized, but still doing a good amount of damage going to be going for that dynamic punch if they do not shield this, this is going to take them out i was contemplating not hitting all the bubbles so i can possibly farm down a little bit more as well uh they do bring in their togekiss switching into giratina and at this point i was like mm, yeah it, it's a pretty much law it's a loss at this point but we're going to still fight on here just to see what happens um i mean it's it's pretty difficult you know going with that Kong Keldor when you have all these uh, legendary ghosts roaming around. Uh, but yes, we do have counters like Togekiss, but still, even a Togekiss uh, will counter them with Charm, but, uh, you know, they're still hitting you pretty hard. Giratina Altered Form with Ancient Power, Giratina Origin Form with Shadow Ball, and even Ominous Wind still doing a good amount of damage to Togekiss. Uh, so it's a game over there. <laughs> all right. So can't win them all. Moving into the next battle. Uh, they do have some sort of error there. So we are going to be switching up our lead from the Conkeldor to the Melmetal. Um, they do make a retreat. We do make an immediate switch into our Togekiss here. I think this one ends pretty abruptly. Um, they realized uh, what was going on here <laughs> with the team comps. Uh, so we bring in our Conkeldor to faint it down. Now we have a bunch of energy and it's game over. And they do forfeit the match at this point. So if you did enjoy this battle, please give it a big thumbs up. As you can see, those were all the raw battles from my Kong Kildor, and I was able to win four out of five. Not bad at all. It is a fun Pokemon, something that you should power up to use in the Master League. Not quite, but then again, you'll be able to use it for your raids as well. Take care, trainers, and I'll catch you all next time.